Hello everyone and welcome back to our Bible study. I have this dog who's staring at me outside of the window. He's waiting to bark, I think, until I get to a really important point in my outline. Welcome to our five minute Bible study. We are talking about 2 Kings chapter 9 today. And if you want the free PDF, you can download it on our website. As always, we've now got PDFs all the way from Genesis to 2 Kings. And we've even got some in the New Testament if you want some. So, okay. When did the events of 2 Kings chapter 9 happen? We're going to be talking about a guy named Jehu who becomes the king of Israel in this chapter and in the next chapter. His reign spanned quite a long time. Probably fits within the window of 890 to 850 B.C. Now to our key characters. First, we've got Elisha. He's the prophet of God. We have a young messenger. This was one of the sons of the prophets who was a servant to Elisha. Elisha sent him to anoint King Jehu, the next king. Jehu is our next main character. God chose him to be the king over Israel after Jehoram. He was the son of Jehoshaphat. And then two kings, Joram and Ahaziah. These were the kings of Israel and Judah, respectively. Not for long, though, we'll find out. And then Jezebel, boo, Jezebel. This was the wicked queen, the wicked wife of King Ahab of Israel. Our first location on the map is across the Jordan River on the east side of the river, the right side. Jehu was anointed king at Ramoth Gilead, top of the territory of Gad. Jehu attacked Joram and Ahaziah at Jezreel. We're also going to talk about the death of Jezebel in this chapter, which happened at Jezreel. And then finally, Ahaziah died at Megiddo. Now over to page number two, we'll talk about our outline. We've got uh, one, two, three sections in this chapter. The first one, verses 1 through 13. Jehu is anointed to be the king of Israel. So Elisha sent one of his servants to anoint a guy named Jehu to be the next king of Israel. This servant was supposed to take Jehu aside privately and anoint him with a flask of oil and tell them that it was God's will that he become the king. The young messenger did exactly this, did what Elisha told him to do. He told Jehu to be the next king and that God would use him to punish the wicked house of Ahab. God had several outstanding prophecies that needed to be fulfilled, saying that Ahab's household was going to be destroyed. When the the young man, the servant, had anointed Jehu and then he left. Jehu told his companions about what the messenger had said to him. And Jehu's companions immediately were, in, were accepting of this message. They immediately proclaimed Jehu to be the next king and they laid their clothing on the steps in front of him as he walked. It was a sign of, of uh, you know, royalty. We'll talk about that in our application section. Verses 14 through 19, Jehu kills Jehoram and Ahaziah. Jehu's been anointed to be the next king, but there's kind of a problem, and that is that there's already a king in Israel. So something has to something has to give. Joram or Jehoram, same guy, different name. Joram, Jehoram, he's called both in the Bible. So Joram was at Jezreel with Ahaziah, the king of Judah. They were together, and Jehu rode his chariot to Jezreel where these kings were, and he came out to meet them. It didn't take them long to realize that Jehu had not come in peace. Jehu immediately condemned Jehoram, the king of Israel, for tolerating wickedness and also for tolerating the sorceries of his mother, Jezebel. When Jehoram realized that Jehu was intent on doing him harm, he tried to retreat and run back into the city, but Jehu killed him with a well-placed arrow that hit him in the back and went through his heart. So the king of Israel is dead. Jehu has an opportunity to take the throne now. Jehu's men threw uh, Jehoram's body in Naboth's vineyard. Do you remember Naboth's vineyard? Now, Naboth was the man who Jezebel had had killed or murdered because Ahab had coveted his vineyard. And so when he throws Jehoram's body in Naboth's old vineyard, right, it's kind of a, a, it's clear that this is a punishment from God. So Jehoram is dead, king of Israel is dead, but Ahaziah is also there, the king of Judah. So what's going to happen to him? Ahaziah also tried to flee from this scene, but Jehu's men shot him. He escaped to Megiddo, but he eventually died in Megiddo. So now Jehu is clear to take the throne of Israel, and there's no king of Judah at this point. 
Finally, verses 30 through 37, Jehu kills Jezebel. When Jehu returned to the city of Jezreel, Jezebel taunted him from her window. Jehu ordered that her eunuchs or her, her servants throw her down from the window, and that's exactly what they did. The text tells us something kind of gruesome. It says, quote, some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and they trampled on her. That's verse 33. Jehu and his men then go in to eat a meal, and after the meal, Jehu orders his men to go out and to bury the body of Jezebel, but they discovered that it had been eaten by dogs in the meantime, and only her skull feet, and the palms of her hands remain. Now, why is this detail in the Bible? Well, this is kind of Jezebel getting what she deserves, but also there was a prophecy that said Jezebel was going to be eaten by the dogs, 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 23. So this was a fulfillment of a, a, a curse, a prophecy that God had put on Jezebel. Now, you'll notice for our application section, I've changed the title to Understanding the Bible. This is more of like an interpretive tip than it is an actual application, but one that's very relevant. Actually, today, the day I'm filming this, not the day it's released, but the day I'm filming it is traditionally been celebrated as Palm Sunday, which marks the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem in what's the event known as the Triumphal Entry. You may remember, or maybe you talked about, Luke chapter 19, verse 35, the people put their clothing in the road in front of Jesus. Now, many people wonder why the people were putting their clothing in the road for Jesus, and this chapter gives us some insights into that practice. You'll notice that in the, the end of our first section, verses 1 through 13, the people set their clothing on the steps in front of Jehu. This was to honor him as royalty. So when we see it happening in Luke chapter 19 with Jesus, the Jews in their excitement were spreading out their clothing in the road for Jesus to recognize him as the Messiah or as Jewish royalty.